Hey, what's up, guys? Today's video is going to be about the Drayton uh, Heatwiser thermostat kit. I recently bought this and installed it in my house, and I just wanted to show you guys the process of doing that and uh, showing you how simple it is, depending on your setup. So, in my case, I wanted to talk first about the heating systems I have in my house. So, um, yours may be different, but I'll just give you a rundown of my specific application in case uh, your house is the same. So in my house I have three heating circuits. I've got an upstairs, a downstairs, and I also have a water circuit in the house. And what that results in, it means that basically there's, there's three different electrical circuits that control on or off signals for each of these. And uh, because I have three different um, circuits, as you see here, I bought the kit three, which has three different circuits so it has like the the home heating built into the hub and then it, the for the water i should say and then it has each individual heating thermostat uh, marked out separately and controlled separately so if we break down how the house actually heats uh, heats up and how the water gets heated first of all we have to think about the system that's in place and in my house i have something called s plan heating and I'm not going to go, in, go into the specifics of that because you don't necessarily need to. As long as you know that you have a particular type of heating then you, and you know roughly how it works, then you don't need to go into every electrical uh, detail. And in this case, I'm just going to show the on signals for each of these circuits, which makes it a lot easier to uh, understand. So the first thing to note is that with the system that I have, I have got three valves. And each of those valves has a live going to the valves. And each of those valves then in turn, once the valve energizes, it separately then sends an on signal to a home heating uh, burner, which is out of my garden. So I'll just draw it like this. So this would be the burner with the chimney and it has a flame inside it. So the way that these work is that if your valve gets switched on by the controller, then once it reaches an open state and only when it reaches an open state will it tell the burner to actually fire. So it means that the burner won't active, accidentally get turned on and start trying to pump water when there's no path for it to go through. So that's the, that's the kind of the background as to why it's done this way. So on each of the circuits then I also have a thermostat. Uh, so on these for these two I'm going to call this one the up circuit. This will be the down circuit which is for the home heating. And then I'll have the third circuit which is the water. So I'm just going off these uh, labels here. So if I look at those then. The third one is actually on the cylinder, the home heating cylinder. Uh, so I'm going to call that, a, it's also a thermostat, but technically it's on the cylinder, so slightly different to the others. Where These two might be on your wall, they could be, you know, anywhere in the house actually. Um, so you just have to, you know, you'll see these are you're just a standard dial type uh, thermostat that you turn up or down to whatever temperature you want. So each of these then comes back and the live on these three goes back and into my controller. So in my case, I had a home heating controller with separate controls for the three circuits, and it had a small LCD screen, and I could program it to come on at different intervals throughout the day and across the week. So it wasn't too bad a controller, but it just didn't have Wi-Fi capability, and that's what I wanted to have. So the way to think about this is that these are all live signals that get sent through the thermostats to the uh, each of these um, uh, valves here and then what you have then is you have the actual power that goes to the, the um, controller you have a live a neutral and an earth that comes into the controller so that would be kind of the basic overview of how your home heating system works it doesn't go into any of the final de finer detail of the wiring center or any of that stuff and simply for the reason that you technically don't really need to go into that detail depending on what you want to do. 
So what I'm doing with the Drayton home heating, I'm actually going to replace th this controller here. It gets replaced with a with a Wi-Fi box. So it's just a kind of a simple box. It has a couple of buttons on it and it just has a little light to say that it's connected to the Wi-Fi. So this box replaces that one. And um, the, the whole idea then is that you have two different uh, thermostats that you can place anywhere in the house. But obviously, you know, you're going to have them linked to whatever circuits you have in the house. So you're going to have one for upstairs and one for downstairs. And these work off having a reading of the current heating set, you know, set point in the house and then what the current temperature is within that circuit. So, you know, let's just say <clears throat> that's going to be set to, um, say it's 16 degrees and it wants to get to 18 and let's say this one's at 15 and that one wants to get to 19 degrees. So you can set these up in your app that's connected to the hub here and that's all done through your phone which is really uh, very neat. So the key thing to note is that these communicate wirelessly. So you set it, set the whole system up. You put these either on the wall or you can actually just leave these sitting on like a table or a dresser or whatever you have. And these will control when the, you know, the, the, these will send a signal to the controller to give it the information it needs as to whether to power on the circuit or not. So the key thing in all of this is that I have three separate thermostats here, which are sort of additional thermostats uh, to these two here. And the thing to note about these is that you can change your heating if you want to, or you can just set these thermostats to max themselves out. So if you can imagine this kind of gates, whether the heating comes on or not, and then it also, the, the signal is also gated by whether these thermostats are happy that, uh, you know, they, they're, they should switch on or not. So the idea is that you set these to their max um, to avoid having to rewire them. Um, or if you want to go down the road of actually removing the existing thermostats that you have on the wall, you can uh, put place a jumper across these in your wiring center to avoid um, having to even think about switching these to the max or keeping these to the max. So overall, it's in, in this case here, it's pretty simple. We just have to take the um, controller that's on the wall, replace it for one of these guys here, and then we just set up the um, communications with the two th additional thermostats, and then we program the whole unit so that if you have a particular schedule that you can t tell the heating to come on to, to reach a certain set point at a certain time and th that kind of stuff there. So. Let's switch now to the wiring and let's just have a look at that. Okay, so before we started replacing the old controller, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons down below. And if you have any comments or queries as to how to do this install or any questions about the Drayton Heatwiser, please leave them down below and we may be able to help uh, you out with some of the questions. Again, I'm not sponsored by Drayton or anything like that. I'm just uh, showing you this video um, in case you want to do the same sort of install and to help you to decide if this system is the right one for you. Okay, let's start into the install. So first thing we're gonna to wanna to do here is to isolate the power to the controller. So this heating system that I have in my house, it runs off AC power. So that is pretty dangerous to work on and the most important thing of all before doing anything with AC power is to make sure that what you're working on is dead or that you can isolate the power circuit in some way. So. In my case, I have a switch beside the controller, which I can just switch to the off position. And I have double checked that the circuit has gone dead, that there's no longer power flowing to the controller by using a multimeter. So if you have a multimeter, I would really strongly recommend using it to check that the power is no longer live before you start this work. If you don't really feel comfortable doing that or don't feel comfortable with working with AC power, then this tutorial might not be for you. So the first thing we're going to want to do here is to remove the old controller from the wall. In my case, the controller is in the kitchen of the house and there are two screws up on top of the controller that allow you to remove the face plate from the wall. And that exposes the backing plate behind the controller. 
It also allows you to see the back of the controller and the pins that are used on the wiring diagram of that controller. So the most important thing here is to make note of the model of the controller and then we can look it up online to check how the pins are laid out. So for the old controller we have to label up the pins correctly so we can see from the instruction manual for it that we have the three channels that pins 1, 3 and 5 correspond to on positions for each of the three channels and then we have that live neutral and earth that I was talking about earlier. Here you can see the back of the old controller and those pins that correspond to the manual for the controller. So here's the backing plate on the old controller and I've just put labels on this image here to show how it's wired. So you have the earth, neutral and live along the left hand side and then you have channels 1, 2 and 3 as shown. So at this point we can take our multimeter and make sure that this circuit is dead with the power switched off before we go any further. And you'll also see here that I've labelled up the wires so that when I remove them from the backing plate that I know which ones are which so that I can reinstall them into the new backing plate that comes along with the Drayton kit. So all we have to do now is check the instructions on the new Drayton system and select the appropriate set of instructions here. here. So I've got the three channel system so as you can see here, there's a neutral, a live, and then I have three channels which are labeled as on signals for one, two, and three. So I have to take each of the three wires from the old wall plate and transfer those across now onto the new one that Drayton have supplied. So now with the wiring complete, we can just take the new controller and attach it to the wall. So one aspect of the install which I wasn't too happy about was the two screws that actually hold the unit onto the uh, wall plate. So they're quite fiddly actually and they're kind of, I, I found it quite awkward actually to get in to actually see where you were installing them. You sort of have to do it by feel. I actually had a small mirror so I was able to use that. But yeah, it's one, it's one aspect of the design that I wasn't too happy about because I think it's easier if those screws are located on the top so you can look at them top down. Of course, it depends on the location of your old controller too. I mean, if it's on a wall somewhere, it's totally fine. But because mine was quite tight in against a set of kitchen units, it was a little bit more tricky than it should have been to actually get the uh, controller installed on the wall. So all that's left to do now is to just pair the whole system to set it up, which I haven't got into in this video. I may do it in a different video. And just set your existing thermostats to the maximum if you plan on keeping those in place on the wall. The thermostats themselves are actually quite nice little units to look at. The, the screen stays off all the time until you actually go to press one of the buttons and the screen lights up. I assume that's just for um, battery conservation reasons. Quite nice to use as well, it's very tactile, they've got a plus or minus button and then you can also change the boost time on the little thermostats themselves. Although I would say a lot of the time people are going to be using the phone app to adjust things so I'd imagine that uh, the phone app is going to be the big benefit in all of this and setting the schedule of when your heating comes on and off using the phone app and doing that from anywhere in the world which is a big bonus. I find it be very useful say if you're away from the house for a few days and before you come home you want to just get the, the house heated up uh, maybe a couple of hours before you land home you can get it um, back to sort of normal temperatures so that you're not landing into a really cold house again. So thanks for watching this video guys um, I'll catch you in the next one. If you have any comments, as I've said, um, please leave them down below or if you have any questions as to how this particular system works. I haven't gone into any of the detail on how the app works or any of that. Suffice to say that it works pretty well from my perspective. You can set a schedule and do a lot of things in the app. So, so far I'm happy enough with it. Um, so we'll maybe do a follow-up video on that. If people would like to see that, just drop the comment down below as to what you want to see. As always, thanks for watching guys and catch you in the next Orbital Tube video.